Hey guys, um, welcome back to my channel, Good Girl Luke here. Um, while I'm at it, I thought that um, today, you see, I'm still dressed in the same attire. I thought that I would add um, how I got this far, you know, in my walk with, walk with God, you know, what brought me to want to talk about God on YouTube and, you know, just live for God the way that I do. Um, you know, I always was, um, I gave my life personally to God. When I was about 11, 10 or 11 years old, I think I was 11, um, I gave my life to God on my own for the first time then. You know, and then in my teenage years, I gave my life back to Christ. And then um, during my um, my early 20s, 20 years old, 21, I started, you know, I always liked, when I was in church, I always loved to, to the word. But um, as I got to 20 or 21, I really, you know, I wasn't paying attention to anybody. Guys in the church that that were in the church, I didn't even noticed them. That's how focused I was on God. Like I, I wasn't doing so much on my own. But when I was in church, like I would just, you know, enjoy the service so much and just so pay attention to the word. But um, yeah. Then you know, I start experimenting with different things in my life. Um, I'm not even gonna go into that right now. But I started, you know, having my own experiences and um. I didn't stray away from God. I was still saved. Well, you always still saved. I was still, you know, had my love for God and I was um, still attending service or whatever. But I started doing some things I shouldn't have done. And, um, but I was still, you know, be attending service and still I felt like I was living for God. So, just last year, um, around. February, February of last of last year, um, I was about to get married. I was engaged, and this video is not to. I'm not gonna be naming any people in this, and this video is not talking about anybody. It's just like telling what. It's just to tell how I got this far. It's not to but bash anybody. But um, I was engaged, whatever, and um, one day. At the end of service, um, someone, it was a speaker, he spoke, and then at the end of service, um, they called for altar prayer. So I decided to go down there, and I was just waiting. Like, um, it was the person that spoke was there, like, at the altar, and they had other ministers um, there to pray for the people, too. So um, I was just waiting, whatever. People were getting prayed for and spoken to, and he... Out of nowhere, like he came to me, and he um I've been prophesied to many a times. Normally it's good, and he came up to me, and this time it wasn't so great. It was um a warning, basically. And once he gave me this, I didn't really know what to do. I didn't, I didn't um I listened to him, but I didn't take it as I should. I was a little worried and scared, but I didn't take it as I should. I could have been getting myself prepared for things and I could have been, I prayed, but I could have interceded into, you know, into, into it or whatever. It's a lot of things I could have done. I'm going to get back to that. And, um, he said to me, he said, God needs someone that's going, God needs uh, someone that's going, God needs someone that's going to serve him. I'm not, don't quote me, I'm 100% on the same words, but something along that line. God needs someone that's going to serve him, so I'm just listening to him. He says, um, yeah, God needs someone that's going to serve him. He says, um, in the next seven days, something crucial is going to happen in your life or to you. And I'm just looking. He says, next seven days, something crucial is going to happen in your life. And um, he said, I don't know anything about you. And it's true. I've seen him before, but he didn't know anything about my life. I don't know anything about you, but the only thing I know, he said, I don't know anything about you except that you just got engaged. And then that was the end of the word. He said those were true things. He didn't keep it long. He kept it short. And he said that. I believe at the end he might have said, be prepared. But yeah, he walked away and I'm still standing there like shocked at what he said. Don't know how to take it. Wait for somebody to come pray for me. I'm standing there for probably under 10 minutes before somebody came. So someone that I knew, that's a minister, um, that person came up to me and said, um, you know, start speaking to me in my ear or whatever. 
and I was waiting for somebody to pray for me after that, but nobody um, did. It was just for me to take that word, and I just didn't know how to handle it. So she, uh, the person spoke to me, she spoke to me, and um, she, she started um, asking me things, whatever. I was like, yeah, you know? And she was like, um, this is to, uh, you know, get you prepared for things, so get yourself prepared, and basically, basically saying, get yourself prepared and stay in prayer. You know, just be pr and be prayerful about it. That this is a word from God, and I later sat down. So fast forward after that, and this was not somebody speaking to me to make things happen. Like, oh, somebody put something on me for things to go back for you know. This was a real. This is a real person of God that said this to me, and I began to see things unfold. The first thing after that that I seen happen was um. This was when I was living in New Jersey and I was basically on my own. Um, I was staying with my sister at my one of my older sisters at the time until I was able to get my own place until I got married. Or, you know, me and my fiance once we got married, we were most likely gonna he was most likely gonna move into that place or whatever. Um, to the apartment. But I needed an apartment to stay because I only was supposed to be in my sister for a little bit. So I'm looking for apartments. I found a few apartments that I like. And I even applied for a, a few different things for assistance and I got denied. Like they said, Oh, this isn't good enough. You know, oh your payment you like not your payment, um you know, the amount this is in, this isn't good enough proof about your work issue and I was working full time as a hairstylist at this time. Um, I'm not working full time as a hairstylist right now. I still do hair but yeah, I'm not working in the salon, but I was working full time in the salon, and they just denied me. I'm like, nah, I make enough money, but they saying that I don't have enough proof to to show, you know, the things, and something else is wrong. So they denied me. They denied me for an assistance that I applied for. So I'm very hurt. I call my mom on phone for my mom. She's out of state. She's living out of state, and I call her and tell her, mom, you know, they denied me for this, and I'm like, you know, kind of hurt. And then, what else happened next? Um, yeah, that happened. And then, um, then me and my fiance, we break up, whatever. We broke up twice. We broke up first time. I was hurt and then we got back together. You know, try to work it through. We were in the process of getting things. Everybody was expecting us to get married. Some certain things were being paid for. So we were like, you know, we could, we could do whatever. Um, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm not going to go into why we broke up, but you know, certain things that we weren't seeing out the eye, we didn't agree on. We both need to grow in, in different areas, and I just didn't agree with certain things. He didn't, he didn't like certain things I was saying, so we broke up for the final time. And you know, um, that was really, that really hurt me. I ended up being stronger the second time, you know. It's like, yeah, we broke up, you know, cool. But, you know, I was really hurt because I was expecting to get married. And then I had to worry about people talking about it. People that knew me um, from the place that I raped at, um, they were like, oh, so what day are you getting married? And they'd look at the thing, oh, you're getting married. And I had to tell everybody, you know, no, I'm not getting married anymore. Um, you know, it's over, whatever. I didn't, like, shun the person, like, my ex fiance, but... I told him that I wasn't getting married anymore, and um, yeah, I told him about that. So that was another little, and this was all happening week, like days and weeks apart from each other. So some things happened a few days apart from each other, and some things happened um, like a few weeks apart from each other. And then I might be forgetting one thing. If I do forget one thing that happened, I will add it. Because it was a lot of tragedy that happened. And then the next thing that happened, um, I was, before I tell you what it is, I was sleeping, you know, in the place that I slept at my, in my sister's house. I, during the time when I was staying with her, I had to stay in the room with my nephew while I slept in my spot that I had, you know. So basically, I'm homeless. I don't have anywhere to go. And I wasn't about to keep on staying. I never lived with him, but I would stay there from time to time to, you know, spend time with him and his family. And so basically, I'm homeless. And my mom is not here. 
I'm pretty close to my mom. Um, I can't go. It's not really good for me to go back to the other place I was staying at. And I'm, if my time is running up, for leave with my sister. You know, she's pregnant with my niece um, that is born now. And um, she needs the space. And, you know, my time just running out. I can't, even if she didn't say that I could, that I had to go soon, I still, you know, knew that I had to go because that's just right. So, I, you know, I didn't want to take up their space. So, I'm basically homeless at this part. I'm sleeping. In the morning, the next day was a Saturday. So I went to sleep on Friday night and I knew I had to wake up early to go to work. I had a client early in the morning to do box breaks and I get a call, whatever. I just didn't go to call because I'm just trying to get a few more minutes of sleep before I get ready. So then I get ready <sighs> and I look at my phone and I see that it's my cousin, one of my cousins. I'm not going to say her name. I said I'm not going to say anybody's name in this. And um, I call her back. No, before I even call her back, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna do what's going on. Um, she normally has like, um, she normally speaks to my grandmother, you know, here and there. And um, I thought it was just something about my grandmother, like maybe she didn't take her medicine because she had my grandmother. She has diabetes, and her blood sugar went up or something. And I hadn't met her at the hospital, or she just wanted to tell me that. So I thought it was along those lines because that cousin, you know, we all have our own lives or whatever. So she, we don't really talk on the phone like every day or anything so it's not like she just called me once things are not good but you know it's normally for something like that so I thought it was along those lines so I called her back the phone is ringing and I'm like yeah I seen that she called me like is everything okay is Nana um you know is she okay whatever she's like yeah and she's like um Emmanuel he died and I mentioned that one name <laughs> I said I wasn't but yeah, my brother, his name was Emmanuel, and um, he was my older brother, and found out that he passed away. And then I'm like, no, nah, you sure? I'm thinking that when she said that he's dead, I'm thinking that he got shot by somebody. And he's living out of state also. So I'm thinking he got shot, like something happened, he got into an argument with somebody, he got into a fight, and then the person was mad, and then they shot him or something. But that wasn't the case. Um, I found out that he was in a tragic car accident. Um, he got into the he got into a bad car accident, and um, it was very bad. Like the car was totaled. He he um, drove into a pole. And also, one of my cousins, he was in a car, but he made it alive. Thank God. And um, he's here, so hopefully he'll tell his testimony one day. He's not here with me, but he's here on there if he's alive, and hopefully he'll tell his testimony. But, you know, the car accident was very bad, and I later found out that he passed away on impact from the accident. So, yeah, I found out that he died. I didn't believe him, like, and I didn't want to believe her. I couldn't believe something like this would happen to me. I lost my dad at an early age. That's the first person that I remember passing away. And, of course, I had other people that I knew and close family members that passed away. But that's the first person I remember passing away. And I was only six years old. And then, fast forward now, so my brother passed away. It just didn't seem real. I was like, no. And I just, you know, started going crazy. I'm like, no, no, no. I broke down in so many tears. I couldn't stop crying. Um, I love my brother. He was somebody that I looked up to so much. Like, I'm not saying that he was perfect. He wasn't perfect. He had his things. Um... He was in street life, um, praying on. He was a man of God. He ended up, he then gave his life to God. He ended up, ended up to be a minister, but he, before then, he was in the street life. And even after he gave his life to God and became a minister, he was a minister. He would do good in, in, in church, and then um, the streets would get him back, whatever. So I thought it was something maybe like that. I don't know, because my brother, he was a gangster. <laughs> he was a man of God. But he was gangster, so, you know, <sighs> that happened, whatever, I can't believe it, I was so hurt, so, she's telling me this, that, yeah, he died, whatever, and she's giving me, um, you know, certain information, um, so, the next person I call, um, it's my mom, I believe the next person I called was my mom, and my mother, she had no life in her, like, her voice was, my mom, she's a strong-willed person, She's pretty loud, and um, yeah, 
she's normally has a lot of emotion and excitement in her voice when she speaks and she also is very opinionated and she could be very loud but her voice was so small so so little but a little life to it and i could just i was like mommy are you okay she's like yeah no i can't remember what exactly what she said but it was so light and i was just hurt and i later spoke to more family members my sister my grandmother my grandmother um, ended up picking me up from my sister's house. Of course, I didn't go to work. I could not take that. You know, in the shower, I cried so badly. I'm glad that, you know, God helped me to heal from this. From And from me healing from my brother's death, I also got to heal from my father's death. Because up until then, I was still hurt over my father. From 6 years old to 25 years old, I was hurting. Sometimes it was every day that I hurt secretly not telling anybody and yeah I was so hurt but you know over time I have still think about my, uh, about my brother and I wish he was here you know but I'm not hurt by it. I know that he's in a better place even though you know he could have been living his life better he didn't get his full he didn't um carry out his full mission his full purpose in life he ended up leaving early and you know he didn't do everything correctly but god showed me signs that he made it to be there with him and now i'm healed from him passing away i'm not longer sad about him passing of course i want him to be here with me and i'm like man i wish i could tell you this but i had to come to a realization of things and thank god i'm healed from you know his stuff and other people's death sadly especially my dad um but yeah my brother he I looked at him. He was my protector. He was like my dad, like my second dad. Once my father passed away, he became the man of the house. And we're only two years apart. At a young age, he began to, you know, help out his family, um, give us advice. He was very protective over me. Sometimes it was annoying. He would try to run my life sometimes. But, you know, he was just there for me. And he would always come. Not always, always, but lots of times he would come and get advice from me, ask me different things, even about dreams. You know, I wasn't good at, at uh, interpreting dreams or knowing the meanings behind dreams. I'm still learning today, but um, yeah, I wasn't nearly as good. He was still coming to me with them, and I was trying to help him the best way. He would give me advice, even if I didn't ask for it. We had a pretty close relationship when we were younger. So, you know, that really hurt me. So, yeah, I want to make this video just about that. But, yeah, so after that happened, um, at his funeral, at the end of his funeral, um, there was another altar call for people to, um, to give, like, people who are not saved to give their life to God to have that opportunity because you never know when, when you might pass away. So, so many young people that got saved, so even through his death, he was able to bring people closer to God. His friends that were in the street and gang members was in the service, like in the at his funeral, and different people went and gave their life to God, and um, it was great. And I even rededicated myself back to God, and I helped people. You know, I heard some a few people while they were up there giving them hugs, and from then on, you know, I just started really listening. Like I had to repent of, you know not really accepting the word that the man of God gave me. Um, it was a prophet word. I apologize. I repented and I apologized to him. Um, I probably didn't necessarily need to apologize to him because, you know, it's not going to hurt him. It's going to hurt me. The only thing that hurt him is if God gave him a word and he didn't say it to me, but God gave him a word and he said it to me, so his job was done. I had to do my part and take it and, and take heed of it and do what I had to do. So after that, I just became, you know, that inspired me to do good. I so much bad things happened to me. I was broke, like, oh, I've got that. My, my finances was decreased. Even though I was making good money, like, well, I was making good enough money to afford the apartments that I paid for. I noticed that my um, finances, like me getting paid, what I made was going lower and I, after a while, I didn't even have the money to pay for, um, pay for, um, pay my boss. I had to go to her and ask her for help, you know, like, can I, can I just, um, 
Um, excuse me, I'm not digging up my nose. I just touched my nose right there. Can I pay you back or whatever? I was, it was so bad. And I ended up going out of state um, to where my mom was. And I had to live with her. And um, before I um, decided to, you know, end my time in New Jersey to work there at the salon that I was at, um, I was going back and forth every single day from that place where my mom was at and to, to the other place, two different states. It takes about two hours and um, to get there. Plus getting on public transportation because I, I don't have a car. I didn't have a car, so yeah. I was going there, so every day I'm spending all that money and I'm going back and forth. And my finances are decreased. I had the to her that I had to resign from working there. It wasn't her, it's just that that was part of it. I had to, to accept it and I know that but my finance just decreased and it was just gonna be more of a toll for me. So that happened. Um I ended up living with my mom and that's where I am now. So God tells me otherwise or not to get my own place. This is where I'm gonna be. Um but yeah my finances decreased and you know all these things just inspired me to get back to God. Not because I'm like, oh, I need to get back to God so I can get blessed. I just wanted, I knew that God was calling me to live Him. God called me for work, you know. I'm not saying that, you know, I'm some preacher or something, but God called me to do things and God need me to live right. I can't do things that other people did. Like, um, going out to different parties and stuff with like different people that I know like my family members like cousins that's around my age they could do it without feeling guilty but um I could never like it was never my thing to go to bars and clubs but I had a good time one time I had a good time but like I had a fully good time one time and I I was like kind of acting the fool whatever it was one of my birthdays but other than that I never felt comfortable going to the club. Every time I would be there, I would feel like I wasn't supposed to be there. And I always would feel, you know, persecuted, not persecuted, um, convicted. That I shouldn't be doing those things. <sighs> always liked it to drink. Not always, like, I liked it to drink. That was my little thing. I didn't like smoke. I never smoked um, weed or anything. But I did like to drink. So I had to stop doing that. Start. Um, my relationship ended with my, um, my then fiance and I became celibate. Um, I knew I didn't want, I went to a God, um, sincere relationship where we were living, where I'm living right and the person is living right, we're both living right together. So I would grow to a marriage. I want to be with the person that God has for me. And I want to really live for God, to carry the words that God has for me, to listen to him. So from then on, I just really started to grow on God. Like little by little, I grew more. And now I'm here. I'm here making YouTube videos. This page did not start out with me talking about God. This page was just supposed to be solely for here. Me showing um, videos about my clients, like me in the shop doing here, me doing a tutorial. Just all about here, because I love here. I love here in fashion, but I'm in the here industry. It was only supposed to be about that. And now look at me, look where I'm at. Um, I talk about God on my Facebook page. I always, well, for a while I've been doing that. But I now make videos on YouTube talking about God. And I'm just growing. I know like this is not yet what God has for me, but you know, I'm going through the process that I need to go through. So I just encourage you to just Throw in your relationship with God. Stay prayerful. Read your word. I need to continue to read my word. I need to read it more. Um, somebody gives you a word. First thing you want to do is you want to pray to God. Ask, to ask for confirmation. God will give you confirmation that this word is from Him. To you, if you don't know if this word is really from God. Even you just want to double check. It's nothing wrong with um, asking God for confirmation. You know, that's what you should do. You know, you don't have to worry about offending the person or whatever. Ask for confirmation. And you know if it is indeed from God. Ask God to lead you. Like take heed to the right, live right, or be obedient and ask God for instructions of what you should do. Um, 